From the nation's capital, the McLaughlin Group, an unrehearsed program presenting inside opinions and forecasts on major issues of the day. GE is proud to support the McLaughlin Group. GE, from aircraft engines to appliances, we bring good things to life. Here's the moderator, John McLaughlin, Washington editor of the National Review. Issue one, the crumbling tower, or so long honeymoon. I now move that the nomination of John Tower be reported unfavorably with the recommendation that the nomination not be confirmed by the Senate. I second the motion. Motion and a second. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Exon. Aye. Mr. Levin. Aye. Mr. Kennedy. Aye. Mr. Bingaman. Aye. Mr. Dixon. Aye. Mr. Glenn. Aye. Mr. Gore. Aye. Mr. Word. Aye. Mr. Shelby. Aye. Mr. Bird. Aye. Mr. Warner. Nope. Mr. Thurman. No. Mr. Cohen. No. Mr. Wilson. No. Mr. McCain. No. Mr. Wallop. No. Mr. Gordon. No. Mr. Lott. No. Mr. Coates. No. Mr. Chairman. Aye. John Tower's battle to become Secretary of Defense suffered a crippling setback this week as the Senate Armed Services Committee voted 11 to 9 to recommend that the full Senate reject his nomination. The vote was along straight party lines as you just saw. The protagonists in this Shakespearean political <laughs> drama are George Bush and Sam Nunn, who don't think alike. I stand strongly with John Tower. Uh, I know of nobody else whose knowledge on defense matters uh, can equal his. His knowledge of how the Hill works can equal his. So he is my choice, my only choice, and I am standing with him. I cannot in good conscience vote to put an individual at the top of the chain of command when his history of excessive drinking is such that he would not be selected to command a missile wing, a SAC bomber squadron, or a Trident missile submarine. Action by the full Senate is expected probably next Thursday. Where does the Tower nomination go from here, Pat Buchanan? Unless there's a miracle, John, uh, the Tower nomination is dead. And the reason it's dead is because the United States Senate is not going to repudiate Sam Nunn and the Democrats on the Armed Services Committee. It's going to repudiate John Tower and George Bush. And secondly, because Nunn's argument, which is that John, I mean, Tower's FBI record would disqualify him for, for you know, leading a missile submarine or a SAC squadron, uh, therefore he's not qualified to be commander-in-chief. It is an argument that reaches right out into the heart of middle America. The Democrats have this issue, and they're going to win the question. Fred Barnes, can you improve on that piece of analysis? Well, Pat left out while, uh, while uh, Tower was going down the tubes. Bush was off doing what he does best. He was going to a funeral. <laughs> the, uh, he attended 408 last year alone. <laughs> well, he's up to one this year. The, uh, he's got a ways to go to be. All right, what's the look, point? Look, the White House miscalculated on this. One, they lost the issue. The Democrats knew there's not going to be any backlash in voting against Tower mm -hmm. because everybody out in the country thinks he has a drinking problem and, and, and other problems as well. But, John, wait a minute, let me add one other thing. They miscalculated the way that Senate as an institution has changed. They assumed at the White House, you force a vote, these guys aren't going to vote against a former senator. And the fact is, they're willing to do that now, particularly one they didn't like. And John Warner said, said the standard he offered as the standard that Tower had never been seen. There was not a single instance where Tower had been seen doing anything that is, where in his conduct interfered with his official duties. That's not the standard anymore. You got to do better than that. Jack Jamon. Well, I mean, he would have to get five, um, uh, five Democratic votes uh, to survive on the, on the uh, floor, and I don't see where the five could possibly come from. There aren't that many conservative Democrats who aren't already on that committee. The other thing is, I think there's an interesting point here. That it is a surprise to anybody who's been around watching a long time to see a Senate committee reject a former senator in one of such recent vintage. But, as, as Fred mentioned, John Tower was not popular with his colleagues in either party, as a matter of fact, and had built up no reservoir of goodwill, and they, they don't feel bad about this at all. In the full Senate scenario of voting uh, that you just constructed, you're assuming no Republican breakaways. Well, right. there was some talk that Senator Pressler might uh, break away. I don't know what that's all I about. I understand that Senator Grassley's mail is running 80 to 1 against <laughs> confirmation. Well, that, that, that may be, but uh, uh, Grassley is not a guy who, uh, who goes with the mail necessarily. 
What do and, you think? And, and this is, the, the pre, if the president really truly stands behind this all the way to the end, you're going to have, the Republicans are going to have to stick together, I would think, out of loyalty to him. But I can't believe when the vote counts get done over the weekend and into next week, that that tower won't be withdrawn or won't withdraw himself rather than face the humiliation uh, of an up and down vote. Mm. The president's hand is singularly weak here. You know why? Because he can't attack none because he's playing the bipartisanship game. So there's no way that he can go to attack the United States let me Senate on this vote. Am I right or wrong? I ask well, you. There's a debate in the White House right now about whether you should attack uh, the Senate Armed Services Committee, the Democrats there, for being extremely partisan, which is exactly what they've been. Mm -hmm. If this was a Democratic president who'd sent up the same nominee, they'd have all fallen well, in line. Oh, this is a part act. But John, let me, tell you, let, him let me tell you what the White House strategy is. There is a remote chance that they could pull this out on the floor. One, they get mm -hmm. Lloyd Benson because he, remember, mm -hmm. he introduced Tower at the hearings and, and said yeah. lovely things Texas. about it. Two, they get Chris Dodd of Connecticut who remembers that John Tower voted against censure of his father. Uh, what do you think That's about true. whether or That's not true. this well, is, I'll give you the rest this is a partisan political matter? Mm -hmm. Isn't it true that of the 11 Democratic members on that Senate Armed Services Committee who voted against Tower, there are only three who are demonstrably liberal. The rest are either moderate or conservative. No. Sam Nunn's a conservative. So yeah, can you but, say but, that even though there was a perfect straight, perfectly straight uh, perce per perceived partisan vote, but, that nevertheless it was not the, political. The, 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 oh, no, there's no question it is, it is partisan. But it is partisan in a somewhat different way than, than we normally think of. What you're choosing between here is the judgment of George Bush and the judgment of Sam Nunn. Mm -hmm. Now, Nunn has always had a lot of ability to lead other senators on matters of weapons, for example, where, where technical expertise is required. This time, Nunn is demonstrating that other, that other members will pay a lot of attention to his judgment on non-technical matters. And right. that's what the choice is. Right. Also, but, but what you've got on that committee now is a deeply partisan division on the committee. They are furious with each other. Yeah. The, the Republicans are also furious with John Warner for having gone along mm -hmm. as far as he did with Sam Nunn. But Sam Nunn, don't forget, is now widely perceived among Republicans to be a presidential candidate Mm -hmm. who is using the Tower nomination to elevate himself uh, in, in that race. All of which, and they want to get after him now, all, and it, the friendship is over. Pat. All of which plays into the argument now Sam Nunn's prestige is totally on the line, and the United States Senate is not going to rebuff Sam Nunn and the Democrats on the Armed Services Committee. Not for Tower George, is not gone. Not for George Bush. Pat, has the time come for George Bush to reach for the telephone and mm -hmm. say, get me John Tower, no, no. and say to John Tower, George John, your Bush. time has come in the interest of no. the party, yourself and the Republic, you ought to withdraw your nomination. Has that time no, come? Don't. What George Bush ought to do is, John, if you choose to stand up and take the vote, I'm behind you. If you choose to pull out, I'm behind what you. What do you say? Well, I think he ought to push it to a vote. He doesn't have anything to lose by doing that. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's going to be... If it's voted down, he's embarrassed. If he has to withdraw it, he's embarrassed. You don't agree with chance, that, do you? There's a chance that they could get a uh, hold all the Republicans and find enough Democrats to have Dan Quayle. You know what uh, we call uh, that? that? We call that wasted vote. rectitude. That's what we oh, call that. Was, do you agree with that? I said it was possible, a, John. Not likely. There's a chance I can high jump six feet, but it ain't likely, <laughs> baby. <laughs> what do you say? I, I think I think they're going to look at the real world about Monday and, and kill the thing. Pull, they're pull going to back. kill it by right. John Tower withdrawing right. his nomination. Right. Yeah. He's caused enough suffering, blah, blah, blah. Right. What do you say? Oh, I think they will counsel with John Tower. If John Tower is determined to go down in flames, I think they'll go down in flames with him. Mm -hmm. So they're going to let John Tower make, up, make the decision. Sure, I think so. The answer is that Tower will withdraw his nomination. Issue two, Salmonella. The controversy over Salman Rushdie's book, Satanic Verses, spread like poison this week. On Monday, the 12 European community nations recalled all diplomats from Iran and denounced Ayatollah Khomeini's death threat against Rushdie. We all view these threats with the gravest concern. We share a sense of outrage at the incitement to murder on British soil. In response, Iran recalled all of its ambassadors to the European community. Then it renewed calls for Rushdie's death. Here at home, President Bush commented cautiously on the situation. However offensive that book may be, inciting murder and offering rewards for its perpetration uh, are deeply offensive to the norms of civilized behavior. Meanwhile, Protests by major American literary figures 
sprang up at U.S. bookstores that had pulled the book from their shelves, inducing one major change to reverse itself and resume sales. What happens next? Fred Bonds. Look, the only thing that can break this impasse is for the Ayatollah to die, really. I mean, that, remember, the, if you're an Ayatollah, you don't have to back down. And he doesn't. The guy doesn't uh, back down. Uh, what is he, 86? Of course, uh, you've always heard those reports about his mother still being alive. Yeah. So he may, not, he may not die soon. But look, the important thing to look at this thing is how much he's gained from this. You sneered last week when I said this is political and not religious. But the fact is, he's enhanced his political power at home. He's made him, he's put himself right on the cutting well, edge of Muslims all around the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, he jumped on this issue. And where no. are, are the Sunni Muslim leaders criticizing the Ayatollah, no. the folks in no, Saudi Arabia? Hey, Fred, all, Michael, hey, Fred. They certainly are not. I heard the only reason why the Ayatollah didn't put a contract out on you is because your writing is offensive to everybody. <laughs> they, uh, let, let, let me, what let do you me, say, Jack? Now, let me make, let me, well, first of all, you, you can't say that all Muslims agree with this. That that's, uh, I didn't, but he's No, but I mean, they, they, that, is, mm -hmm. that is clearly true. Whatever his, it, it doesn't matter what his, his uh, reasons are. There is only one response, and that response is for us to isolate that country much mm -hmm. more than we have done already and, and do this firmly and quickly right now to show we won't put up with this. You know what's really interesting is what a brilliant a tactician uh, the Ayatollah is. Every time he wants to, to get the West uh, mm -hmm. in an uproar, he takes a hostage. Salman Rushdie is his latest hostage, and the West has gone berserk again. And what he, what he wants to do is use our, our outrage to, to whip up the rest of the Muslim world and become the leader and revive his revolution, revolution. There's one thing, though. In this case, what he needs is economic aid from the Western world. And he may lose it this time because, because of this stunt. The Europeans may cut him off, and that's dangerous to his regime. Again, Mort is right. It was a, it's, a, it's almost Nixonian, the brilliance of the maneuver. <laughs> Excuse me. Seizing upon an emotional issue and rallying all the troops, even the moderate Islamic groups, and basically not to resist him. But the Ayatollah's got himself on a wicket. He's got himself out there where if somebody kills Rushdie, or there's some, one of these idiots tries one of these bombs a bookstore, the West is going to have no other recourse now except to retaliate. And so he's out front on it, and if he doesn't back down, the response is not going to be economic, it's going to be military. Do you want to speak at all to the shutdown of, the, of one of, of a couple of the chains, I believe, of bookstores, to uh, the selling of this book and whether or not you think that that is a reprehensible... No, I don't think it's reprehensible. A lot of these big bookstores, they got all sorts of, 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 of small outlets and things like that. They're concerned about their employees. They're like supermarkets. They get threats and things but they like are, that. So they are I mean, in the they're book not list. responsible for standing up to threats. They sell books. Yeah. You know what books yes, are? I know what they yeah. are. Yeah, okay. they, I mean, that, that's the whole, I mean they, they commerce and ideas. They have no, uh, they have no mm -hmm. justification for that at all. If you start, if you start doing that, my lord, you could drive any book off the shelf. Absolutely. Yeah, Jack, absolutely. Right. No, wait a minute. No, let me tell you. Geez. Let me tell you what's really reprehensible, as well as that. I agree with Jack on that. And that is this: this analogy that's been made first. I, uh, uh, one of uh, Rushdie's editors in England said, "Oh, gee, Rushdie's in the same position that that Philip Roth was when Jews were criticizing that's him absurd. for Portnoy's complaint." Or, or uh, it's like uh, uh, the uh, the producer, the director of The Last Temptation of Christ, when Christians were picketing against it. I mean, those are pe that is, it's not the same at all. What the Ayatollah done, has done, it, it's not a difference of degree. It's a difference of kind. Let's get out. One word answer. Is this story going to build or ebb? Pat Buchanan. Uh, it's not going to build unless something happens to Rushdie now. What are you saying? I agree. Jack? Yeah. What are you saying? Same level. Answer the story. We'll continue to build. <laughs> Issue 3, 48 hours over Tokyo. President Bush and heads of state from around the world this week assembled in Tokyo for the funeral of Japanese Emperor Hirohito, who died last month at the age of 87. And Root Bush gave another reason for his trip besides the funeral itself. And he sounded a little bit worried as he gave it. Yes, things in the Pacific seem to be going reasonably well. But we are a Pacific power, and this visit will demonstrate that we tend to stay a Pacific power. Before leaving Asia, Bush will meet with over 16 presidents, prime ministers, and kings. How important is this trip in a diplomatic sense? I ask you, Pat Buchanan. Uh, I think it's an important trip. I think the, the basic part of it is that George Bush is going to Japan and meeting there and speaking with him. It's not over any single issue, but to maintain what may be the most important relationship in the world. Secondly, he goes over as president of the U.S. 
and he meets with a great number of leaders. I think it's a good introductory no, trip. No, 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 no. Well, the thing is that you'd think that Bush would, would try to get something done. I mean, he's not apparently going to get anything specific. You mean specific. policy? He is policy. He is no, no, get. he's meeting with people. What policy would you like to have say, him get done? Well, what even policy? if he, even if he went, made some decision on the SFX, the, this plane that the Japanese want to build, or he got like what? started on... Like what? Get behind it? Or, or made, it, made some decision on it. Okay. Or, or, or got, just a second, or got started with the great partnership that, his, that he talked about in his campaign with the Japanese. I mean, get that's, something going. He's been in office. About, about, he's been in office now almost a month and a half, a month anyway, and 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 nothing is happening. How about a U.S.-Japanese free trade zone? Should he talk about that? Yeah, Would that be sure, a good idea? Yes, is yeah. he doing anything like this? I don't know. No. You no, can't. No, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. This, 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 <laughs> the, the idea that all this. Oh, I mean, this is. We, we've been treated to all this film from Tokyo in the last week. This thing is one big media event. It is an extension of the campaign. It is not reasonable to expect the president to go over there and do serious negotiations in brief meetings, luncheon meetings with a leader with 15 people on each side of the table. What are you going to happen? That's true. What do you there think? is an important stop on this trip, and it's China. That is the real reason why Bush wanted to go over there, so he could tell Trump the Soviets before the Sino-Soviet uh, summit in May, Trump them and tell Deng Xiaoping not only is the U.S. friendship with China still existing, but it's even greater now because I, George Bush, am president, and I'm friendlier with China than any president you've seen before. Issue four, Duke the Fluke, or Duke the Trendsetter. Republican David Duke, quondam grand imperial wizard of the KKK, was elected last weekend to the Louisiana legislature causing a national uproar. I've heard Mr. Duke say that he's for uh, all races, not against Jews nor blacks, but he's still the president of the National Association for the Advancement of White People. Now that's pure racism. It's a beautiful morning. I think it's a new dawn for politics in Louisiana. Sparks flew between Mr. Duke and Lee Atwater, Republican National Committee Chairman, who threatened Duke with censure. This man has a 20-year background of hardcore anti-Semitic, anti-black, racist activities. Uh, he beguiled voters down there one time, and I don't think the voters down there really know this man. I'm every bit as much a Republican as Lee Atwater. The voters voted for me. He needs a lesson in Americanism. If people can vote and elect someone, that's who should our representative should be. Mr. Lee Atwater should simply have said, well, the people have spoken. On Wednesday, Duke was sworn in, drawing mixed reaction from fellow legislators. Some analysts say that the person most responsible for Duke's win was none other than George Bush himself, who ran campaigns as last fall, widely perceived as racist. After all, they ran a campaign, uh, you know, with, that, that emphasized heavily the heart and spot, uh, you know, and there was a, it was clearly a, a racist overtone to that. I don't care what anybody said. Is Walker right, Jack Juman? <laughs> no, they, they, I, uh, I think it's a little bit of a stretch to blame this. I would blame the Bush campaign for many things, not for this. Let me make a point about this. You thing. mean this whole phenomenon this, the, this, is... The, well, how, the, why did it spring up? Well, why don't you, why don't you let me tell All you? All right, go ahead. The, um, <laughs> what, you know, what has happened here is we've lifted a rock on something, and it is a problem not just for the Republicans, but for both parties, and that is this. And, and the politicians have known this, and they don't want to talk about it, but we've had a serious resurgence of racism or at least racial resentment in the American electorate and the white electorate, not just in the South, in the last few years. Some of that has, it focuses because it's easiest to focus on affirmative action and minority set-asides. And to the degree that is true, it has been encouraged by the attitude the Reagan administration took on those issues. Right. This is a serious problem for both parties. The Democrats it's, have it's, to deal with it. It was reflected yeah, no, wait a minute, in the Southern right. opposition to Brown. This is a Republican problem immediately. It is a problem for both parties. But, 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 it, but the Republicans have been toying with, ra with the sure. white vote in the South on a racial basis because oh, the true. black vote right. is increasingly Democratic. So they've been, they've been sort of tiptoeing around the edges of racism. Happened. Just a second, just second now. But I think what Lee Atwater did in this case was to elevate the issue and, and accomplish right. two things as a result. First, he's trying to curry favor with blacks prove that the, that the National Republican Party is different from that. At the same time, though, 
the Republicans benefit from this in the they South. I mean, he's either. made this a national issue, this so the is whites hard. in the South will gravitate to the Republican Party. Lee Pat. Atwater put the prestige of the President of the United States and Ronald Reagan on the line in a legislative district and got their clocks cleaned by the imperial wizard of the Ku Klux <laughs> Klan. That's not a victory for the GOP. It was a stupid thing to elevate this race the way it was. Secondly, he is feeding on backlash on crime, anti-quotas. There's nothing wrong with those issues. But the Republicans do not know how to run against the populist right the way they know how to run against Dukakis. What they should do is go in and take away the legitimate issues from this guy, like anti-quotas, anti-set-asides, and leave him out there, and, uh, and they Pat, didn't do Pat, it. Pat, Pat, you're getting all hysterical about You mean about they, they so, built wait a minute. John, they built the whole thing John, up, sure. John, There's a point to doing John, that, though, Pat. I'll, wait, I'll disclose that wait, to you wait, in a moment. John, what do you let me, say? Let me explain to you how you... I mean, just hyping this thing, there were about 16,000 voters there. You change about 110 of them, and Duke doesn't even win, and we're not talking about that story this week. It's a very, I mean, hey, you're drawing oh, from some, some incredibly small sampling, some that, 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 is, that is, wait, let me, let me make it, that, that is, that is, that you cannot minimize this. This was a... Oh, of course you can. Wait, wait a minute, let me, let me make this point. You can't minimize it because, because he had a very respectable Republican opponent in John Treen, and just as conservative right. on those issues. He was a you tax had, you, you had You had a high turnout election. You had this in a white suburb where there was no sort of perceived immediate black threat. The fact is that this is a this is a serious thing, a serious we, feeling in the electorate. But, but, and the but, but he has won. He has won a question. state wait. legislative seat in the whole wide. But you hey, don't hey, invest hey. the hey. president's prestige in a legislative well, seat. He's stupid. not the president's prestige. It's George the pre Bush and, is running oh, oh, Can it's, we address the question of the candidate or now the, the winner of the seat? The a good candidate. Excuse me. The Klansman is a good candidate. What? Tell you why. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. Here's why. Let me tell you why. He's a When all the cameras came down there, he said he apologized for wearing that Nazi uniform when he was 17. <laughs> he talked about taxes. He talked about uh, uh, racial set-asides. He talked about crime. When all hey, the cameras Pat, were guy, Wait a minute. They made the guy a martyr Does to those people. Does he look good on television? Do you believe in reform? I, uh, no, not, not that kind of reform. Wasn't Bob Byrd a member he, of the Klan? He, he I know wants, what he stands David for Duke, believes. If David Duke <laughs> wa wants to apologize to... Bring it out. Yes or no point. answer. Did, did Lee Atwater play it smart? Yes or no? Lee Atwater got his clock clean. What do you say? Afraid so. What do you say? No, I think he had to do what he did. What do you say? And I think it was pretty smart, too. <laughs> I think it was smart, too. The answer is, he was smart. <laughs> Issue 5. Rosie hesitates. The rosy scenario for the economy may be showing the first signs of fading. Inflation worries grew this week when consumer prices rose over six-tenths of one percent in January, an annual rate of over seven percent, the biggest jump in two years. On the same day, the stock market plummeted 42 points and the dollar tumbled. Alan Greenspan, chairman of the Federal Reserve Board, voiced a warning. Let me stress that the current rate of inflation let alone an increase, is not acceptable, and our policies are designed to reduce inflation in coming years. Greenspan added that if inflation worsens, a recession will be inevitable and prolonged. At week's end, two major banks raised their prime lending rate to 11.5%. The Fed raised its discount rate to 7%. The questions now are these. Will the Fed tighten more? Is a recession on the horizon? Is Greenspan overreacting? And I ask you, Mort Kondracki. I, the administration thinks that Greenspan's uh, overreacting. The, the, the inflation rate at 7% looks like a fluke because it was food prices based on the drought last year and it was tobacco prices based on excise taxes in California that boosted the, the cost of living. So it's up. a fluke? So it looks as though, it looks as though Greenspan, who's inflation-minded anyway, it got inflation mania, may overdo this thing. If he, if he keeps ratcheting up the interest rate through the federal funds rate, you could have a recession here. And if we get a recession, we are so deeply in debt there, the, the, that, that I don't know how we'll ever get out of that, it. That's hey, the hey, problem. Maud, 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 you think that the inflation rate is only a blip? I, that's, I well, mean, there, what you want to do, John, what, what you want to do is see next month. You, you don't want to start yeah. ratcheting what, up no, interest no, rates. Do. No, but it is, it is building, it is yeah. building, it's building, it's it's building up, up history. But, but, but we there don't have know been, it's been Jack, it's I mean, it, it may be that it was exaggerated by those factors you were talking about that one month, but nonetheless, if you look at the wholesale figures, it, the trend has been upward. Whether it's been upward to the point where it's going to cause a recession, now we don't know yet. I think what you, what you have to think about here is what those, what the, uh, 
uh, Bush administrations, the Bush budgets, revenue projections are going to mean if we have a recession. Absolutely. It's going to mean a catastrophe for that budget. And not just the revenue projections, the whole SNL program, why? the bailout for why? the savings and loans, because they're based on, on selling bonds at a certain interest rate. And, and, and the government and, has to pay those interest it'll, rates. It'll wipe that out. But, uh, and, and notice that and, the, the numbers jump there, too. They're now under $157 billion to pay off that problem. And that's true. But the one, uh, uh, the one forecast that I've read anyway was done by an economist named John Mueller, who used to work for Jack Kemp, accurately predicted that there would be a rise in inflation in both consumer and producer uh, uh, prices right now in the beginning of the year. And what he is predicting, based on his model, is that there will be a recession in 1990, but a mild one. Pat. Mm -hmm. Well, I think what this demonstrates is clearly the, the, the Fed and monetary policy is antecedent to fiscal policy and far, far more important. Hey, Pat, I saw you so often on CNN this week, I thought you were conducting a telethon. Hurry up, John, I got a taping. Predictions. <laughs> uh, predictions. Uh, next candidate to have real some trouble in the U.S. Senate on confirmation, Larry Eagleburger, and they'll be getting into all the, cli all the clients of Kissinger Associates. Woo! Fred. Well, a, a, a State Department nominee who will not have trouble is Hank Cohen, who's going to be named the uh, Assistant Secretary for African Affairs because he's a strong believer in Savimbi and sending aid to him in Angola. Jack Jamont. Hank Cohen. One result of the tower. Quickly. One result of the tower. I think a big presidential push uh, for Sam Run now. Wow. Uh, hey. Two of the biggest people in Washington, James Baker, Secretary of State, and Senator Bill Bradley, are bad-mouthing each other all over town over the dead issue like a bunch of schoolboys. I predict, and this is partly wishful thinking, that the two of them will grow up and settle it so that we can get a good debt policy. Within weeks, within weeks, Delaware will authorize public flogging for drug trafficking. Next week, the long-anticipated, <laughs> widely heralded on-site report from NATO headquarters in Brussels by you-know-who. Bye-bye. The McLaughlin